Welcome to Extra Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the Extra Channel. We also have a main channel. That's why this one is called Extra Throttle House. Casual, one take. Laid back. Laid back. More of a conversation than a car review. Correct. About this, which is a Mini. It is a Mini. It's a yes. bright Mini. Yes. Is this green or is it yellow? I feel like I'm going to get in trouble for saying one or the other, because you're about to tell me. It's called Zesty, zesty Yellow. Green. Zesty yellow. It can't be yellow, it's green. It's green in, in the shade, it's, it's yellow. It's really, you know, it's quite dynamic in that sense. Looks like bogeys. Um, it, looks like, it looks like the Sao Paulo yellow on the M4. Also look like bogeys. So these wheels, I have yeah. to point them out from here, they look like they're asking to be curbed. Yes, they quite, stick out. They're quite sticky outy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, this is an interesting car. <laughs> so when I first drove away with this, yep. you know, staying with the yellow theme, yep. I was, I wasn't embarrassed until I pulled up to my house yeah. and my neighbors were sitting there and I was like, oh God. And, and, I, and that's bad because I think we should get away from cars being... Like girls' cars. Like, or... Yeah, girly. This concept of something being girly just doesn't work in 2021. I also think it's code for yep. something that just means lighthearted fun. Okay. Because I like Miatas, which are apparently girly. You I like do. Cooper convertibles. I like fruity drinks. I like wearing women's underwear. It's smooth. You know? <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> just wake up, people. <laughs> it's 2021. Uh, but this provides an extreme value. That's the important thing to note here. Extreme value? Yes. Really? Yes, because for $56,500... That's a lot of money. You get the least amount of horsepower per dollar that I can think of in any car. And this, what, this, that, that's the value? This wears the JCW badge, which if you didn't know, is John Cooper Works is a descendant of uh, the Cooper Car Company. Okay, hold on back. You can tell me the history all you want. I just want to go over the fact that this is the least amount of horsepower per dollar that exists? Yes, that two, 228 horsepower for 56 and a half grand. <laughs> it, it, it does start in the, in the late 30s, but as spec yeah. in the convertible with the packages, it's 56 So it's front wheel drive, 228. Eight. How Same much? as a Golf GTI. Same as a Golf GTI, which is how much money? It starts at like 33. Yeah. Right, it's good looking. It's compact, you know, and with that comes some sacrifices. Careful how you say compact, by the way, because if there's mini people watching, they get all up in arms. I don't think you're allowed to call them mini people anymore, you you, are you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's easy to identify with. That's because not what I meant. It, I think it is. <laughs> it's easy to identify with because it does what it can with a small package. Yeah. So oh my if goodness. we look at the trunk, yeah. it's lacking compared to something like a Golf GTI. Yeah, that's not very big. Right? But, but they, you can't get a Golf GTI convertible. You can't. Right? You can't, there but, you go. But... Yeah, and it's interesting because with this car, it's so cohesive and honest about what it is. Yeah. Instead of sitting there, you know, when I first looked at it on paper, I'm, I was like, oh, it hasn't got this or it doesn't match this. Yeah. It's so cohesive in, in the way it drives and the way it looks. Okay. It's got such an identity. And the same thing, people say that the Miata is overpriced for 41 grand top spec, right? Right. But I messaged Jason Fenske from Engineering Explained yeah. yesterday and I said, the Miata's peak automobile, right? And he said, yeah, it is peak automobile. And that's, there you have it. That's two people agreeing. <laughs> so what I've learned from America recently is that that's how facts are created. <laughs> so, so as far as I'm concerned, if it's, oh if it's the best way to get this yeah. version of the car, that's the price that's you're going to pay. And the fact that you can get a JCW for the 30s. That's anyway. true. Anyway, I like to point out that this, well, we've, we've, when we were in England last year, or was that two bloody years ago now two years yeah, ago, yeah. It, we we drove the previous gen interior by, by generation this isn't a new generation it's we drove the updated. cooper s it's right? just updated yeah right this is this is uh got a different steering wheel and controls and it's got a different kind of gauge i say gauge cluster it's more like a tiny screen that's attached to the well, steering column the one the id4 similar yeah similar concept where it moves to the steering column it's got some kind of new buttons and stuff yeah. here it's got a head-up display which is a little bit primitive it's kind of like the cx3 it's not a new gen does style. it actually shine on the on no the... no it folds up the glass so it's not a head-up display it's just a second screen it is a second screen and, and, and this, unless you're like using the lane assist no, actually it doesn't have lane assist unless you're changing track okay it doesn't show you anything different to the gauge cluster so you, all you have is your miles per hour kilometers per hour twice it's a bit, okay, uh, so, so what you're saying is that there's a lot to make fun of about this car. A lot of stuff that makes zero sense, but, but right now you like it? It's funky, you know? So can I drive it then? You can, yeah. Okay. And we can't sit in the back seats because they're tiny. They're, okay, yeah. good to know. All right, here we go. Feels like a Mini right away. That's quite a fun sound. The, it is a great little sound. Yeah, yeah. from a turbocharged four-cylinder, they've actually made this sound really good. If you think about how quick it is, though, that's where it starts to fall right, down. Up a hill. That's not bad. That's not bad. It's slower than a Veloster N, and it's slower than a Golf GTI. 
Slower than a Blast Trans, slower than the Golf GTI. It's like, yeah, it's like north of yeah. six seconds to 60. North it's, of six seconds. It feels significantly nicer in here, though, than than uh, a Golf GTI. Well, actually, no, I haven't been in the new one. No, that's not even true. It was nicer than the Veloster N, anyway. Yes, yes. yes. However, it rides harsher than even the Veloster N. So this is... It's not that quick, is it? No, it's not very quick. And this is the convertible, so it only comes with the 8-speed automatic. You can't right. get a 6-speed manual. But you could in the non-convertible. In the, in the, non in the hard top, you can get the manual. So, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. This new steering wheel is very BMW. They, they, they go over chunky with their steering wheels. Some people, some people dig it, some people don't. I think it's nice. I like, I like the chunky steering wheel, but I like M cars, so it's kind of what I'm used to. I think there's a lot more Miata philosophy going on here than GTI. Every time I talk, you know, its ride is compromised. It's not that quick. So it all comes down to kind of handling. Yeah. And it does handle. The ride is, whoa. Really, really harsh. Really harsh. Yeah. It's quite sporty, though. Like, it's, it is. like, well, the, the response of the throttle, response of the, like, everything is, is quite good. Yeah. People say that this is like a go-kart. Do you have a say, sport mode? You do have a sport, sport mode. Sport mode we are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, the go-kart thing's interesting, because people say the Miata is like a go-kart, except I think, having gone karting two days ago, this is more like a go-kart, in that the weight of the car feels below you more than the Miata. And the Miata, you feel like you're in plane with the weight. Yeah, yeah, this, well, this this is known for having that kind of like four square, like strong, like on the road thing. Oh, there's some torque steer. There is a bit of torque steer. It is front yeah, wheel drive. Very much. Um, I, I've, oh, been, I've been living with it. The suspension is really harsh. Really choppy. Really harsh. It's actually deal breaker choppy. Interesting. Yeah. The, no, the front end feels really good though. It's funny, BMW's steering technology has improved, like their, their electric power steering is, has improved so much since they but it's started weighted, doing it. It's quite weighted, so it makes the car feel heavy, even though it's got a really small footprint. I see what you mean. I, I don't know, I, it, it's a toss up, but when, when they put extra weight, when they allow weight in electric power steering, it's a toss up between the car feeling like the steering is unassisted, but the car is light, versus the car actually feeling heavy. Do you know what I mean? Whatever it is, I like it. But do you see what I mean with the head-up display? It looks like it's just doubling up the information. Yeah, it's pointless. That's yeah. utterly pointless. Yeah. It doesn't need to be. I'm not well, I've been living it. with it, so I've written some notes here. You've Yeah. Okay. Um, so, first of all, yeah. two dozen eggs. What? Oh, no. Uh, this is the wrong... That's the wrong thing. <laughs> uh, I'll just try and remember then. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's the shopping list. So I like, I like the way this does the revs. As you rev, that goes up. And as you use things, it goes up. But when you do yep. this, it oh, changes. Oh, it's got the same thing, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's in the, in the previous, I don't want to say generation. But I love that. And a lot of people have opinions about the Mini's uh, interior. And I think the jukebox vibe. It's fun. With, especially with CarPlay. This is why it's CarPlay. Fun. Yeah. But it's missing tech. That's why I've written here. Oh, you've, you've got some stuff. Yeah, right yeah. There. It's okay. missing tech. So it doesn't have lane keep assist. And a lot of people say, whoa, there's tech that's just going to break. Okay, yeah, so sure, still, but it's still missing it. tech. So yeah. it could, to be competitive, it could do with some of that. What else have I got here? It's fun though. It's like, like it's, it's immediately fun. fun. It's very fun. Do you fun. know what I mean? Yeah, it's got yeah. a personality to it. I really do like the, the, the way that minis drive. I've always liked it. I, I've liked this, that they, they prioritize front end grip very, very well. And I feel like, you know, BMW's engineering knowledge of front end grip is translated very well into these cars. One person gets the armrest though. I've noticed that. One yeah, person, I see yeah. like you've it's claimed me. it there. It's, me. it's yeah. me, you've just okay. Good yeah, well you know. get the steering wheel. But on your on the other side, yeah. your arm if when the your arm's high, your elbow goes high here. That's too high. It's too high, it's very tub like. Yeah. And then here's the other compromise is the visibility right now is okay. But when you put the roof down, actually it's quite a fun mechanism that you can do while moving. Um, is that a joke? No, it, it's, Oh, you can, it's, okay. It's, yeah, you can. Um, but when the roof is down, in order to not sacrifice that much trunk space, the, the actual roof sits quite high. So it becomes a van in that the rear view mirror is completely pointless. All you can see is sky, unless there's like a lorry behind you. Really? You can't see a car behind you, so you're, you're stuck with just in wing mirrors. <laughs> Interesting. So it's a strange. So that's thing. not a good. That's not a good design then. Which is weird. Okay. In a Miata, when the roof is down, it's the most visibility of any car ever. It's just flat. Yes. Yeah. But one thing that is nice about having the roof down, and if you have never driven a convertible, this is a slightly weird thing when you get in it, is that the rear view mirror suddenly feels HD. You don't have a glass, <laughs> another glass. Another glass. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You look at it like, wow, that's some high def background. Puts the power down pretty well. Oh, <laughs> what the heck? Did you hear a little chirp on the upshift? 
That's did. fun. So That's it, fun. It's, it's geared differently to the DSG in like a GTI. It's, this is more fun. Yeah, yeah the, the shifts are quick. Like it's, it's, it's more aggressive. So here we go down to first gear. Won't let me. And then, yeah, the top of first gear is 45 kilometers an hour. That's great. I wish manuals were geared like that. You'd just be constantly shifting. I, I would. Right? I would get this in a manual. I would get this in a manual. Minis are fun in manual. I, yeah. I, I enjoy them very much. No, this is this is a, little, a fun little car. I wish the ride was better damped. I just feel like, I think it's a common misconception, and I've said this a gajillion times, that in order to have a, a good handling car, you need stiff, harsh suspension. It's not true. You just put higher quality dampers in the car, and it will stay flat in the corners. Oh, well, this has a $600 or something extra damping package. Well, that's not good enough. And you can't really feel it. No. I'm getting a lot of tram lining, actually, on this road. It's grabbing the crown. Is it? Quite, oh, jeez, bumps. Yeah. Hides its speed very well, we'll say that. And it, and it does it, you know, even if it doesn't throw you back in your seat, suddenly on the highway it's got plenty of pull. But I, I th it's difficult because, it, you know, we get the Golf R quite cheaply in Canada. It's it's like 43 grand for a Golf R, 45. Right. So if you, if you, if you just want performance, especially the Mark 8 Golf R, this isn't going to touch it in straight line speed. Right. But there is, if you if you buy into the mini thing, the same way you know, people, Miata people seem crazy, and I I know I know what it's like to be converted. Yeah. So if you're a mini diehard, I, I finally get it. I didn't understand it with the Mini Cooper S that we drove. I the mini, it wasn't enough. The JCW is just enough yes, to make you understand yes, it. Yes, okay. but the ride is is harsh. It is harsh. Interesting. I mean, okay, so like. Straight up objectively, I'll just like list off some things for those that be wondering. This turns in better than a Golf GTI. It turns in as good or better than the, uh, the Veloster N. Um, I, I think that like I can't test obviously on limit handling or anything, but I have driven minis hard before, and they you know they rotate fairly well. It feels small, even though it's not actually that small. I think that the throttle response is bang on right. I think that the uh, the we'll we'll put it in auto, but the manual shifting is fun, right? Oh, the steering is heavy. It is, I told you it's heavy, really yeah, it makes heavy. the car feel heavy. Yeah, it's fun. But also the other thing is, if you're like above six foot, you can't fit in a Miata. And your brother is six foot five, six foot six, he, he fits in he this. He fits in this, yeah, hundred percent. So it's one of those it's one of those convertible options, because he's stuck with the 86 slash BRZ, because those you can fit in if you're tall. Now this really feels like it can kind of like just like crush a little back road. Yes. Right? Like it has that it has that vibe about it. It's That's, just it's so loud on the highway though. It is loud right now, actually. However, we discovered yeah. even with the roof down, I was talking to Thomas on the car play. It, I could hear you. It isolated my voice really well. Yeah. So I was shouting and I had him you know the volume turned up really loud to hear him, but he could hear me just fine. So. Okay, well there you go. Is it worth the money? I'm not sure about that. That's a that's a no, that's a the, big price in, tag. In this spec, it's, it gets a bit egregious. Yeah, I think skip the convertible unless you really want a convertible for some reason. If you're going to get a convertible, get a Miata. That's my opinion. It, but if you want a Mini Cooper, it's, it sounds like, based on our experience, that the JCW might be worth it over the S. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Sh sharpens it up enough. Hard top. And I, I think if you get it with the Premier package, you're probably in the mid 40s, whatever that is in the US. It's, yeah. It's a solid car. And it's just part of a, I don't know, it wears, it wears such a culturally significant dress, yeah, you know, yeah. costume. It's it puts its shoulder into the corner in a really exciting way. I do, it's fun. I've always liked these. It's movies. really fun. It's, it's really it's good. It's more fun to drive than a GTI. It's not as, as raucous as a Veloster N. No, not, not quite. And it doesn't have quite the personality of Veloster N, but it's got its own little That's thing. That's what I mean. It's closer to a Miata. It's, yeah. it's silly. It's just having fun. Mm -hmm. I think it is too much money, though, straight up. I think it's too much money. I'll say that. Speaking of too expensive, yeah. This is I've realized this is your shopping list here. Oh. Why have you got 